Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we're answering the age old question, how much does the rear move when you raise and lower the car due to the panhard design? We're gonna find out that in this video and have the results. So stick around to the end because we're gonna have the recap. Let's go ahead and get to it, guys. All right, guys, so let me kind of take in here, show you sort of the design and how I set this up. So this will be to the extreme here. I am going to do a middle height and then I'll do a high uh, height as well. All right, guys, I went ahead and lowered the string here. Now this, if you don't understand this, this is like a plumb bob. You put something heavy on a string and then you tape it up on the fender here, up on the quarter panel, and then you just let it drop, okay? And then it's going to find basically a plumb sort of hang and that way I can be constant when I'm measuring it to the center of the hub here. So that's gonna be how we test this. So I'll go ahead and set you guys up here. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and take our first measurement and we're going to do it with it drop like it's hot. OK, now, again, I don't drive the car like this at all. This is just my park stance, but I'm taking these measurements for a very extreme example. Right. So this is going to be lower than, you know, most third gens, unless you're also on air. Right. This is going to be the most movement that we're going to see if it does move. And when I raise it up, there's not gonna, unless you got a four by four third gen or one on air suspension, that's gonna be the opposite extreme. So just take that as a note, okay? And I'm gonna try to stop where the stock third gen is according to some buddies of mine that sent me some measurements, which is a little over 27 inches, maybe 27 and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna measure it at that height and of course, my tire combination, even though it's not the stock sizing, overall it should be stock uh, to uh, a stock third gen sort of height, right? The ratios and all that sort of work out, so just know that. Anyway, let's go ahead, let's measure first how high we are, and then we'll measure how deep we are and how far you know the rear is. That's 24 and three quarter inch. <laughs> That's pretty low. Now we're gonna go ahead and measure how far it is from the outside here. I'm gonna use a caliper so we can, and I'm gonna put it on millimeter and you can do the inch conversion if you want. All right guys, that's 81 millimeters basically 80.96, something like that. Okay, that's 27 and a quarter inches. That's supposed to be close to where a stock third gen is, okay? So it's all relative, guys. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just doing an experiment here, okay? just to see if the rear end moves. Now we're gonna measure this, and let's call this the midway point, okay? Which on most third gens is gonna be the high point. All right. So for quote unquote a stock third gen height, that's gonna be 78 millimeters. Okay, so that's a difference of three millimeters between where I had it dumped and a stock third gen, okay? Now to me, three millimeters isn't a lot. That really isn't. Now, this is where it's gonna get crazy, I think, because now again, I'm getting ready to put it in four by four mode. You guys are gonna look at it and say, holy shit, that's way up in there. Again, this is just an exaggerated sort of experiment here, just to illustrate how much it moves, you know, is it extreme movement, the higher you go or the lower you go? 
That's what I'm hoping to answer in this next experiment. All right, guys, now we're way up there. And if you look, now we're at about about 30 inches. Wow. So almost five inches more than, let's say, a stock third gen. Now, again, nobody's going to be driving this high. Because I have air suspension, I'm just trying to do an experiment to see how much it moves, does it move more drastically the higher you go or the lower you go, okay? 30 inches. So this is almost three inches over a stock third gen, okay? <laughs> so nobody's gonna be, unless you're like some type of, uh, you know, you're running from the police and you gotta run in a cornfield, you know what I mean? I know you guys have done that, right? <laughs> All right, this, okay, we'll just call that the cornfield height. All right, guys, that's about 72 millimeters, okay? So that's about six millimeters. So basically what that says is, again, the lower the number, which means the rear is coming this way or the body's moving towards the passenger side. So it's going like this, right? So... That was pretty extreme, I think. But the key is an adjustable pan hard bar. You gotta have one of them if you start messing with the height of these cars at all. And I would even suggest that if you don't, you just always wanna be able to dial that thing in. So that's my number one suggestion on these. And I would also say there's a single adjustable pan hard bar. Get the double, I have the single. I think the d double, you don't have to remove the end to be able to adjust it. So it's just a lot easier and you can get that uh, dialed in quicker. So either way, it's definitely more expensive for the double, but you know, single or, or double. I have the the single UMI adjustable pan R bar on this car and it's not too bad really, especially because you really don't adjust these things much, right? All right guys, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and measure to see if the tire or the wheel moves in the wheel well forward and rear, okay? And that would just mean that you may have to get an adjustable control arm if you wanna center it back up perfectly. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna run the camera. I'm gonna put the string right in the middle where it's at right now. And then I'll go ahead and lift the vehicle and you'll see the string move off center. So I'll try to put the lens right on the center of the wheel just to give you guys a good perspective. So let's check that out. We're gonna go from grasshopper, aired out, all the way up to four by four level, or what we call cornfield level. <laughs> let's hit the cornfield, baby. All right. Yeah, so you can see there, it definitely it moved, right? So as the car went up, it actually, the wheel kind of goes back or the body goes forward, however you want to look at it. So that's the results there in terms of the forward. And again, this is crazy extreme, guys. We're just trying to like figure out how much things move. So guys, let's go ahead and review the results. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. So. Again, here's the three levels that we talked about. We've got the lower air down at 24, three quarters of inch height, it was 81 millimeters. Then we had the stockish height, which was 27 and a quarter inches off the ground. And that was 78 millimeters from the string to the hub or the hub to the string, right? A difference of three millimeters. Then we had a four by four height, or what we're now calling it cornfield height, 30 inches off the ground. And that was the most dramatic. So that just showed us that was a six millimeters different than the stock height, okay? Again, this is a very extreme example. Nobody has their car this high unless you got some super swampers on it, <laughs> okay? Um, 
but that was six millimeters difference. All in all, nine millimeters difference. It moved from extreme low to extremely high. So think of a 10 millimeter, right? About that much, which isn't a lot, but I do get it when you're talking about tire clearances and that sort of thing, that can make a big difference, okay? So think about that. It's not quite a half inch, but it can make a difference when you're talking about stuffing a really large tire under your car and trying to get that height. And so for me, again, I'm gonna go ahead, figure out where I wanna cruise this car and then set all the adjustable suspension pieces so it's right, it's centered, all that good stuff, guys. I hope this was very helpful to you. Comment, like, subscribe. If you've got some different measurements or some different ideas on what to test here, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys and I appreciate all the comments that you guys always do. All right, we'll see you on the next video, guys.